Did you know that Mansa Musa, a 14th century African king, was so wealthy that his generous handouts crashed an entire country's economy? Now that's what I call a stimulus check. Now let's dive deep into the story of Mansa Musa, the legendary king of the Mali Empire. Born in the 13th century, he inherited an empire that was rich in two of the most sought-after commodities of the age, gold and salt. It is believed that his net worth was so astronomical that it's impossible to put a modern value on it. Some say he was the wealthiest person in all of human history. Mansa Musa's wealth was not just a matter of personal indulgence. He used it to build mosques, libraries, and universities, turning his capital, Timbuktu, into a hub of culture and learning that attracted scholars from across the Islamic world. His wealth was not just his own, but a source of prosperity for his kingdom and a beacon of civilization in the medieval world. But the tale that truly captures the scale of his wealth is that of his pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324. Accompanied by a caravan of 60,000 men, including 12,000 slaves each carrying four pounds of gold bars, Mansa Musa made his way across the Sahara. Along the way, he freely distributed gold to the poor, to cities he passed, and even to the ruler of Cairo. His generosity was so vast that it flooded the market, devaluing gold and causing hyperinflation. Imagine his wealth was so immense that he inadvertently wrecked an entire country's economy. The impact of Mansa Musa's wealth didn't end there. His fame spread far beyond his kingdom and even his continent. In Europe, cartographers began to include Mali in their maps of the world, often depicting Mansa Musa holding a gold nugget. His wealth, and the power it signified, put Africa in the global map. So, next time you find a gold coin in the couch cushions, remember Mansa Musa and maybe, just maybe, hold on to it. Imagine having so much money that you can literally build a floating palace. No, this isn't a sci-fi novel. It's just another day in the life of Roman Emperor Caligula. Ah, Caligula, the Roman Emperor known for his eccentricity and outrageous extravagance. Born Gaius Julius Caesar, Augustus Germanicus in the first century AD, Caligula reigned for a brief but memorable four years that were marked by wild spending sprees and lavish indulgences. His penchant for luxury was so extreme that it still stuns historians today. Among his many extravagant exploits, one stands out, his floating palace. Yes, you heard that right, a floating palace. Caligula wasn't the type to settle for a regular landlocked mansion. No, he desired a palace that could sail the seas. And he didn't just stop at a floating structure. This palace was complete with vineyards, hot baths, and all the luxuries you'd expect from a Roman emperor's abode. It was a testament to his wealth, but also to his eccentricity and unbound desire for luxury. But as with many tales of extreme wealth and extravagance, Caligula's story doesn't end well. His wild spending and luxurious lifestyle quickly drained the Roman treasury. His subjects grew weary of his reckless behavior and extravagant spending. This dissatisfaction eventually culminated in his assassination, marking a brutal end to his reign. His floating palace, once a symbol of his immense wealth, became a symbol of his downfall. Historians believe that Caligula's insatiable desire for luxury and his disregard for the financial stability of his empire played a significant role in his downfall. It serves as a reminder that wealth, while it can buy you a floating palace, can also be your undoing if not managed wisely. So remember, even if you can buy a floating palace, it doesn't mean you should. The tale of Caligula's extravagance is not just a fascinating piece of history, but also a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked wealth and extravagance. Ahoy mateys! Ever dreamt of finding a buried treasure chest? Well, pirate Captain Kidd actually lived that dream. Born William Kidd in the year 1655, he began his life's journey in Scotland. However, history remembers him not as a Scotsman, but as one of the most notorious pirates of the high seas. Captain Kidd's name has become synonymous with unimaginable wealth and buried treasure. He was a privateer, a pirate sanctioned by the government, and his exploits took him across the vast expanses of the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. It was during these voyages that Kidd amassed his legendary treasure. The tales of Kidd's wealth are as vast as the oceans he sailed. It was said that he buried his vast fortunes in secret locations, from the sandy beaches of the Caribbean to the rocky shores of Madagascar. Some stories even suggest that Kidd's treasure found its way to the New World, buried deep within the soil of the American East Coast. Yet, despite the numerous tales and legends, 
The exact locations of kids' treasures remain a mystery. Over the centuries, countless treasure hunters have tried to uncover kids' hidden wealth, with little to no success. The elusive nature of kids' treasure has only served to fuel the fascination and the mythos surrounding it. Today, the hunt for kids' lost loot continues. Modern-day treasure hunters, armed with metal detectors and satellite imagery, still scour the globe for a chance to uncover a piece of pirate history. The allure of hidden treasure, the thrill of the hunt, the promise of untold wealth, these are the elements that continue to drive the search for kids' lost treasure. Who knows? Maybe your backyard is the final resting place of Captain Kid's treasure. Just don't start digging without a permit. Ever wondered how today's billionaires stack up against history's wealthiest? Let's just say they're not exactly slumming it. Our journey through history's wealthiest people has taken us from emperors with a flair for the extravagant to pirates with chests of buried treasure. But how do these figures of the past measure up to the billionaires of today? Well, it's a bit like comparing apples to gold-plated diamond-encrusted apples. Back in the day, wealth was often measured by the amount of land one owned or the number of ships in one's fleet. Today, it's a little more complicated. We're talking stocks, real estate, tech companies, and yes, even space travel. The concept of wealth has evolved, and so has its scale. To put things into perspective, consider this. The Roman Emperor Augustus, widely regarded as one of history's richest men, had a personal fortune equivalent to about one-fifth of his empire's economy. Now, let's turn our gaze to a modern mogul, someone like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. Their net worth, while impressive, doesn't quite match up to a fifth of the global economy. But remember, they're playing in a much, much bigger pond. Today's billionaires have a different kind of influence. They're not just wealthy individuals, they're powerful entities. They shape our everyday lives, from the way we shop and communicate to how we work and even how we dream about the future. Their decisions can sway stock markets, their endorsements can make or break trends, and their philanthropy can impact millions of lives. The wealth of today's billionaires is not just about the accumulation of money, but about the power and influence they wield. It's a different kind of wealth, one that's far more complex and far-reaching than anything we've seen in history. So, while we may not have gold-devaluing kings or treasure-burying pirates today, we've got billionaires who could give them a run for their money. But at the end of the day, what does all this wealth really mean? Is it all golden palaces and buried treasures? We've taken a journey through history, marveling at the opulence of Roman emperors, the hidden hordes of pirates, and the unimaginable riches of today's billionaires. But wealth, as dazzling as it might be, is not without its price. When we speak of extreme wealth, we often envision a life of luxury and leisure, but the reality can be quite different. The impact of such significant wealth can often be a double-edged sword, not only for individuals, but also for the society at large. For every tale of grandeur, there's a tale of downfall, of unhappiness, of lives consumed by the very riches they possessed. Take the story of Howard Hughes, once one of the wealthiest men in the world. His fortune amassed through the film and aviation industries was astounding, but his later years were marked by isolation and paranoia, a stark reminder of the loneliness that can accompany great wealth. Or consider the societal impact of wealth disparity. As the gap between the rich and the poor widens, tensions rise, leading to unrest and instability. The French Revolution, sparked in part by the opulence of the monarchy amidst widespread poverty, stands as a stark cautionary tale, but it's not all doom and gloom. These stories serve as reminders of the importance of balance and contentment in life. The pursuit of wealth for wealth's sake can lead to a hollow existence. True wealth lies in our relationships, our passions, and our ability to make a positive impact on the world around us. The allure of treasure chests and floating palaces can be intoxicating. But if there's one thing history has taught us, it's that wealth isn't everything. The richest people aren't necessarily those with the most money, but those who have found contentment and balance in their lives. So before you start dreaming of finding a treasure chest or building a floating palace, remember that wealth isn't everything. After all, even the wealthiest can't buy happiness.